Gold is dropping ahead of the FOMC. Jim Wyckoff is next. Kick on News back in the studio and joining me this Wednesday is Jim Wyckoff. Jim, thanks for being with us. Always nice to be with you, Daniela. Day nine of government shutdown, Jim, and we also have the debt ceiling limit approaching, the date now being pegged as October 17th. So much to talk about. How is this weighing on the precious metals? Well, Danielle, I think the marketplace is taking this, this U.S. government dysfunction, uh, the government uh, budget impasse and, and the debt ceiling, and it kind of rolled it all into one big mess and one big problem. Uh, investor anxiety and trader anxiety is ratcheting higher by the day. Um, a lack of government uh, news is, is, uh, is squelching fresh fundamental information. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's been bearish for many markets. Uncertainty in the marketplace generally breeds bearishness, and that's what you're seeing in many markets, and you've seen that just here recently in the uh, gold and silver markets. However, uh, as I said in uh, my uh, PM and AM reports yesterday, uh, the sense of the marketplace right now is that the U.S. government will, will in the 11th hour, come to uh, a budget agreement and also raise the debt ceiling. However, if that does not happen, then I would think you will see strong safe haven demand pour into the gold market. Jim, so far the government shutdown has not supported gold prices, but you're saying down the line it could. Down the line it could, Daniela. Uh, the sense of the marketplace right now is, is that the U.S. government, as has been the case in recent history, the U.S. government will pass a budget uh, resolution, reach a budget agreement, the U.S. debt ceiling will be raised, uh, and uh, things will be as normal, uh, or as normal as they can be in Washington. If a credit agency lowers the U.S. Uh, credit rating, then that could all uh, augur for some safe haven demand into the gold market and be a real game changer on a near-term basis for uh, uh, gold. Jim, in 2011, S&P downgraded the credit rating of the U.S. government bond for the first time in the country's history following the government's decision to increase the debt ceiling. Do you think this could happen again? Daniela. The, uh, uh, there is the possibility that as we move to the October 17th so-called drop dead date for the U.S. Uh, debt ceiling, uh, you know, if on October 18th or the following Monday we do see the U.S. miss a debt obligation, uh, you could see a credit rating agency lower the U.S. credit rating. You could uh, also see uh, uh, some significant safe haven demand for gold. And any surprises from the upcoming FOMC meeting happening soon, Jim? Regarding the FOMC meeting, Daniela, I suspect that there's not going to be anything earth-shaking coming out of that meeting. What the marketplace will do is really look for uh, any clues that uh, were not issued uh, in the FOMC statement, any clues regarding when uh, the, the, or the timing of the uh, the tapering move to uh, reduce the monthly bond buying by the Federal Reserve. Uh, so that could, there could be some clues in there. My bias is that there's probably not going to be a whole lot new coming out of these FOMC minutes. That being said, uh, the marketplace has been surprised with previous FOMC minutes, and, and there has been some market sensitive information. My bias is that's not going to be the case. Jim, before I let you go, let's look at support and resistance levels for gold and silver. Okay, Daniela, for uh, December Comex Gold, you've got solid technical support at the August low of 1271.80, solid overhead resistance at the recent high of 1353.80. On uh, December COMEX Silver Futures, we've got solid chart support at the recent low of 2063, uh, solid overhead resistance at the $23 level. And now, Jim, your Wyckoff market rating for gold and silver, what grade will they receive? Daniela, I'm giving uh, both gold and silver a Wyckoff market rating of four. That is tilted toward the bearish camp. The near-term technical posture for both gold and silver remains tilted bearish. So, Jim, you've become a little bit more bearish since the last time we spoke. Slightly more bearish, Daniel. I let the charts uh, direct me in my in my uh, postures for the markets, and uh, indeed, the down near-term downtrends remain in place. 
uh, certainly for the gold market and arguably for the silver market, too. Jim, on that note, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Can't wait till next time, Daniela. Bye-bye. And thank you for watching this edition of Technically Speaking with Jim Wyckoff. Email us. We want to hear your thoughts and newsfeedback at kitco.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Daniela Comboni. Thanks for watching.